Bill Connolly. I'm a politics professor at Washington and Lee. I've been here since September 1986. Uh, I direct our Washington term program. I teach American politics. I'm a Congress scholar, but I teach many courses in American politics. I've been a faculty advisor for the mock convention since the 1988 convention, which was my first convention. Although my role then was minimal, uh, I actually uh, was quite stunned at my first mock convention. My predecessors, Buck Buchanan, uh, Milton Coleman, who were the faculty advisors for mock convention, told me, Bill, you have to see this and you should become the faculty advisor. And uh, I frankly sort of yawned and said, oh, OK, sure, looking forward to it. And that weekend, I was stunned. I had never seen a political simulation as impressive as the 1988 mock convention. And if anything, it's gotten better ever since. It's a good, good tagline at the end. I like that. <clears throat> Tell me a little bit more about the student-run part of the mock convention. This part is, is the short, sweet answer, and then, and then we'll do a, a longer answer. I'm the faculty advisor, but mock convention is student-run. It's a student-run, student-centered exercise in student self-government. It's all about the students. They do all the work. There are various faculty members who are helpful and supportive, but it's the students. Okay. And then expand on that a little bit um, for, the, for the, the other, you may, and you may have to repeat yourself. I'm sorry about that. But expand on what the students are doing. So they're doing political stuff. They're doing fundraising. They're right. doing they do the camera with them. Right. They do, they do, when you say everything, here's what I mean by everything. Do you really want me to go through everything? Because I can talk about building the organization from three to... An yes, and I'll, and I'll, yes, and we'll chop it down. So for the long documentary, we, we do want to know what the different parts are. Okay. You, you don't have to expand on it. You okay. can say from the, from the, you know, not choosing the candidate, but also, you know, they, they do this. They, they raise the money. They, they do. They right. rattle off maybe a handful of Okay. Um, so we're expanding on the student-run right. aspect of the mock Right. The heart and soul of mock convention is the accurate prediction of the nominee of the out party, uh, the party out of the White House. Um, and so a good part of the student organization, the mock convention organization, is geared toward getting that prediction accurate. Um, but the mock convention is a large organization. Uh, it involves an enormous amount of fundraising, mostly from alumni. So there's a fundraising chair, for example, a finance chair. Uh, there's a media chair. There's a speaker's chair. We bring in lots and lots of uh, big-name speakers, politicians, typically. Um, and that's an enormous amount of effort, and that's where a lot of the money goes. Uh, there is a lot of involvement of the alumni. The alumni are endlessly supportive of the organization. There's a media chair who coordinates. We've had, for example, gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage by C-SPAN in 1996, the entire mock convention on C-SPAN. We've had CBS here. We've had other news outlets here. So the media operation is a big part of the student effort, the fundraising operation, the overall organization, even the, the parade and the party aspect of it, the students have responsibility for that uh, as well. Um, but the biggest part and the, the largest part of the organization is the research operation. Uh, which is designed to, again, accurately predict the nominee of the out party. And that's organized along the lines of the 50 state delegations. Uh, Mock Convention begin. Mock Convention is a continuing organization. Uh, it always is in existence. With the last Mock Convention, the uh, 2012 Mock Convention, uh, the tri-chairs chose the trustees. The trustees then are a holdover and they choose the new tri-chairs who come from the freshman class. We now have the new tri-chairs. They're in the process of building the five-person executive committee. The executive committee will then build a steering committee of about 25, 26 positions, which include, for example, speaker chair, media chair, fundraising chair, et cetera. Um, and then uh, they build the entire organization. And the organization reflects uh, the federalism of our constitutional system, uh, 50 state delegations. And in those state delegations, you have people who are responsible for uh, alumni relations, people are responsible for the prediction. So those are the, the folks who make contact with 
the professors, the pundits, the pollsters, the politicians in each of the 50 states, because the 50 state delegations are supposed to uh, accurately reflect the nominating process in their state, whether it's Iowa, for example, with the caucuses, or the New Hampshire primary, or Florida, or Super Tuesday. And so the prediction for the nomination at mock convention is the compilation, in effect, of 50 state um, predictions by the state delegations. Now, as we all know, some states matter more in the nominating process than others, Iowa and New Hampshire most famously. Um, so the 50 state delegations uh, comprise, by the time the actual mock convention comes along, 95% uh, of the student body. This is a student-run, student-centered exercise, and student self-government involves, uh, it's the most participatory exercise on campus. It involves almost the entire student body for years. There literally are hundreds of people, hundreds of students working for a good two to three years on that one point, getting the accurate prediction. And they've been remarkably successful. As you know, they've had an uh, excellent track record. Way since day one, all 50, well, it would have been 50 states, obviously. Um, but, well, not Hawaii. But, but, it, but in general, <clears throat> has it always involved the student body, or did that change somewhere to, to involve all the students? Well, again, I've been so, in. So I'm, getting, I'm getting into the history right. back in 08, I guess. Right. Uh, and I'm not that old. I wasn't here in uh, 1908. Um, so I can't speak directly, but I believe it was a student-wide convention even then. So throughout much of the history, the century-long tradition at Washington and Lee, it has involved, on mock convention weekend, um, virtually the entire student body. Um, but in the run-up to that, the two or three years before that, it involves two to three hundred students. Um, uh, I do know that since I've been here, my first mock convention was 1988, it has in fact involved the entire student body, and from everything that I've heard, that goes back at least into the 1950s and the 1940s, that the vast majority, 95 plus percent of the student body was involved. What do you think the students uh, get out of it? Not, not, and, and start with the, the tri-chairs, but then the, the other 94 uh, percent who are not, who are just simply showing up as delegates. Yeah. Um, mock convention is a uh, superb example of learning by doing. In my teaching, for example, directing Washington term, I try to bridge the divide between theory and practice. Mock convention is a legislative simulation. It's practical learning about politics. It's hands-on learning, whether it's media or fundraising. After all, money is the mother's milk of politics. Uh, organizational behavior, um, uh, working with, again, the pollsters, the pundits, the prognosticators, the politicians. Um, uh, putting together the political research uh, team. It's a lot of practical experience. Uh, most importantly, uh, it's an exercise in civic engagement, uh, civic activism. Uh, students learn that politics is a good thing uh, and that politics is something that they uh, should get involved in. So in that sense, you know, you often hear that college students sometimes are apathetic. That's not true at Washington and Lee, and one of the reasons is the mock convention. It gets students interested in uh, politics. Now, if you start with the tri-chairs, uh, the tri-chairs uh, are running a small startup business. So they are gaining practical hands-on experience running a small business which this next cycle could involve a million dollar effort. Uh, and uh, that's a, and a million dollar effort that will involve almost 2,000 students. So this is no small entrepreneurial effort on the part of three students who then become five students who then become 25 or 26 on the steering committee. It's an incredible uh, effort, incredible responsibility. Um, they learn to work with alumni to raise funds. Uh, some of them do. They learn to work with speakers. They learn to work with the press, the media. Uh, they learn to make connections with politicians. Many of the students gain uh, connections for future jobs, uh, et cetera. Um, so uh, it's a great exercise in practical politics, and uh, they learn a lot uh, in the process. And as a political science professor, I can tell you, they learn a lot about um, 
the presidential selection process uh, and how it is that we choose uh, presidents in this country. It's the best way to learn about that. If you're interested in politics, you should come to Washington and Lee uh, because of mock convention, because of Washington term, and a whole series of other exercises we have. We're proximate to Washington, D.C., uh, but mock convention provides enormous opportunity to get involved in the political process in a serious way. Uh, whether you're a Democrat or Republican or an independent, uh, you'll make contacts, connections for future internships or jobs. Uh, you'll get to meet a lot of uh, big name politicians because we invite all sorts of people to uh, the mock convention and even big name journalists and other uh, sorts of, of people. So it's a good opportunity to network. Um, it's a good opportunity to learn about political research. Um, we've had students who have gone on from working in the political research operation to becoming pollsters or political consultants uh, or being parts of um, political party research teams. That is the real Republican National Committee or Democratic National Committee uh, research uh, teams. So it's a good entree to politics, uh, both in terms of knowledge, uh, expertise, and connections. Because what you know is important, who you know is also important. Perfect. Tell me more about the uh, research. Um, and you can go back a little in history because it's, it's, we had the, uh, one of the tri-chairs uh, tell us how <coughs> they're doing it now, but it's obviously not always been that way. Um, a little further back in history about the research, you know, was done on the phone versus how it's done now with, you know, the internet and, you know, they can Skype people. Bill, I assume you don't want me to use your name, right? Like, don't say Bill. Don't, don't say Bill because I'm not here. And okay. my question will, will, will not be heard. Yeah. So you can say, well, the, the way they used to research it, it right. was by. Okay. The mock convention has evolved over the years, okay? Just as the presidential nominating process in the United States, actual nominating process has evolved. It used to be a convention dominated process. It used to be the party bosses in the smoke-filled rooms coming from the 50 states coming together once every four years to nominate the president of either of the two political parties. Um, but in about 1968, uh, the political reformers uh, changed the character of the presidential nominating process so that we know now there's no longer the party bosses in their smoke-filled rooms nominating the, uh, nominating the, uh, the uh, president or the nominee for the president. Um, it's, now, uh, it's now primaries. Mostly it's a primary-dominated process. Uh, and so it's a very different sort of selection process today. And we've started those reforms in 1968 under the McGovern-Fraser Commission. Uh, we completed them for the most part in 1972 as a nation. But that process, we've been reforming those reforms every four years, you know, moving Super Tuesday up, moving Super Tuesday back, uh, making the process more or less front-loaded. Uh, we tinker, we as a nation tinker with the presidential selection process every four years, uh, making Iowa or New Hampshire more or less important, et cetera. So the students have had to change mock convention with the times, and they've done a remarkable job of it. Um, our student body is nationally based. We have students from virtually all 50 states. And oftentimes, those are the chairs of the, of the state delegations. And some of them have connections. Maybe they know, you know pundits, professors, politicians, pollsters pol uh, back in their states. But if they don't have the connections, they make those connections. Uh, and they, use, they touch base with those folks to get as much feedback as they possibly can. Now, in the old days, for example, if you go back to 1952, um, the students were on the telephone talking to the governor of California uh, in order to decide how the California delegation would vote. That was pre-presidential primaries. <laughs> That's when the governor of California could single-handedly decide which way to throw his weight. Um, so the students had cultivated a relationship with the governor, Earl Warren, who la later went on to be a Supreme Court uh, justice. Uh, the students had cultivated that working relationship so that they could call him up when the time came to make the decision. Uh, now it's more developing relationships with people who are going to be, help you predict the 
primary in, say, New Hampshire, uh, or the caucuses in Iowa, or the primaries in other, say, Super Tuesday states. And that oftentimes is pollsters, it's the party politicians, it's the pundits, it's professors. You know, Larry Sabato uh, at the University of Virginia um, is probably the single political scientist most associated with electoral politics in Virginia. So the students have always had a very nice working relationship with Larry Sabato. Uh, and he has come to, we have Larry down once every four years to talk to the students and help them set up their research operation. Um, so they do a remarkable amount of research in all 50 states. Tell me about the uh, timing of the Bar Convention. Mm. When in 82, it was in uh, March, I think it was. Okay, well, now it's, right. it's, it's in January. That's right. And, and the 56 one uh, was in June. Right. Like that. That's right. Sweltering hot. Yeah. <laughs> so, so tell us the, how, the, how the timing has changed and why, why it keeps moving like Super Tuesday. I'm not well, Super Tuesday, but the other, you know, back in time. The fact that mock convention has had to move back in time from June to May all, all the way up into January or February is a good example of how mock convention is a realistic simulation because it's molded to the actual nominating process. As the presidential selection process in the country has become more front-loaded, for the students to make mock convention a realistic simulation and for the heart and soul of mock convention, which is the accurate prediction, they have to predict before the whole country already knows who the nominee of the out party is going to be. Uh, and so we have found ourselves moving mock convention from you know, May, April, all the way back now into February or even January because we don't want to be preempted by a sudden stampede in favor of Mitt Romney or whoever uh, the out party is. Um, we want it to be uh, a relevant prediction. We want it to be the first and the students have done a remarkable job of figuring out the timing uh, of that. To be honest, there have been times, for example, uh, the convention that chose um, uh, Barack Obama, or excuse me, the, the convention that chose... Yeah, I was going to ask you about 2008, <coughs> because that, that should be a good example. Yes. Go ahead and bring your computer back to um, So yes, talk thanks. about 2008. Yeah. How could they have gotten that wrong? Well, Right. Uh, 2008, uh, the 2008 convention is a good example. Uh, that was South Carolina Saturday, and they were on that, the, the convention was going on that Saturday. And the conventional wisdom in the country was pretty clearly that Hillary was the likely nominee. Hillary Clinton was the likely nominee uh, of the Democratic Party. But uh, the momentum shifted literally on the day that mock convention was making its decision. And the students, of course, were panicked. They were nervous. This was a very big decision. Uh, had, they had, it, had they made the decision 24 hours later or 36 hours later, they probably would have chosen Barack Obama because the conventional wisdom switched so rapidly that suddenly Hillary Clinton was no longer the front runner and Barack Obama, as we know, became uh, the nominee. Uh, but other than 2008, we've had a remarkable track record of success, 1972, we did get that one wrong as well. Um, but over the course of the century-long tradition, it's a highly accurate uh, a predictive exercise. Can you, sum can you summarize 08 again for me <clears throat> um, using the, how it changed in a, in a day's time? In 2008, the momentum shifted very quickly from Hillary Clinton being the presumed frontrunner to Barack Obama. Uh, if the students had held their convention one day later, they probably would have gotten that prediction correctly because they would have had a little more data, which is South Carolina and the result in the South Carolina primary. Okay. Um, why do you think uh, the mock convention is important? That's a big one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but let's, let's explore the, the importance to uh, this. To, to, yeah. uh, to Washington and Lee, why is it important to the institution, and then why is it important, and you can sort of talk about yourself personally, mm -hmm. and also why you think it's important to the students. I don't think that's in the camera, is it? Well, it doesn't matter, it's just, oh. a, just, oh. a, it's just a distant piece of paper, no one will be able to tell what, yeah. 
Yeah, no, you can pull that quick because this 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 is a camera. So this one's in extreme close. Like this, just like this. Okay. And the, and the wide shot's got all okay. wonderful. You know, we won't call it clutter because it's. <laughs> because it is because it is clutter. Because it is because it is it is clutter. Um, mock convention is important because uh, it's an exercise in civic engagement. Gets the students involved in civic activism. Our students are not apathetic. Uh, they're seriously interested in politics. Um, they're student. They're seriously interested in student self government as well. Um, Washington Lee prides itself in every way in student self-government, including and perhaps especially the honor system, which is student-run. Mock convention is also student-run. So student self-government begins with governing oneself, and mock convention is a good example of that. The honor system is another good example of that. Um, uh, students learn a lot. They learn leadership lessons. Sometimes they learn very hard leadership lessons. Uh, every four years, there are challenges, there are difficulties. Everything does not go uh, according to plan. Um, and so uh, students sometimes suffer the consequences. Um, but that's one of the reasons mock convention is a good realistic exercise, is it teaches them uh, important, uh, Im important lessons. It teaches them that politics is a good thing. It teaches them that they should be interested in politics. Uh, they should be engaged. Um, it teaches them responsibility. Uh, and then more specifically, it teaches them, many of the students, lots of skills, political research skills, uh, journalism skills. We have lots of political journalist, uh, journalism students who get involved with mock convention. Um, and it teaches them how to get a job in the future by making connections with some uh, politicians and others uh, as well. Um, it's a character building experience for the students uh, because it's very trying. I mean, especially at the top, the tri-chairs, the executive committee, the steering committee, these students are under a lot of pressure uh, and things sometimes do go wrong. Uh, and so, uh, you know, just as diamond purportedly are made from coal, long pressure, long periods of time, four years, these students grow up a lot um, as a result of uh, mock convention and there was, as a result of running an organization that ultimately involves 2,000 people and upwards of half a million to a million dollars of money raised mostly from the alumni, uh, they learned some very important uh, lessons in that process. Share with me uh, some stories that you may have about uh, the trials and tribulations of a mock convention or two. Um, well, one of the best speakers that we ever had was Mario Cuomo. Now, Mario Cuomo was the governor of New York uh, the expectation was that he would run for president, so the students were very interested in getting Mario Cuomo here. Um, and they succeeded, but they succeeded on Mario Cuomo's terms. Uh, uh, I won't tell you exactly how much they spent, but they spent more than $1,000 a minute for Mario's, Mario Cuomo's time inside the borders of Lexington, Virginia. Uh, they flew him down on a private plane. Uh, they uh, Brought Mario Cuomo up here for, uh, uh, you know, in a limousine uh, from the airport. He walked up to the podium. Uh, he gave a beautiful speech, one of the great speeches for mock convention. He's a magnificent speaker. The students assumed that he would walk down and, and sit down with the students and talk to the press students, et cetera, and the real press folks who were there. He walked off the podium, he walked to the car, he drove away or the limousine drove him to the airport. The students were aghast. They were greatly disappointed. However, they also had just experienced, in the course of about uh, 17 minutes, one of the best speeches mock conventions ever had. It was a disappointment that he didn't stay around to talk to the students, but the fact is he had given a beautiful speech. Um, so that was well worth it. Uh, let's see. Um, um, well, uh, Newt Gingrich was here, member of the other party, uh, and as the whole country I think knows now, uh, beside being interested in being president, beside being Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich is of course a, a lifelong college professor. Uh, and so Newt was in his element, uh, surrounded by college students. And the professor came out in Newt, and he realized he had a captive audience, a class, and he gave a beautiful speech, but it was mostly a lecture. 
uh, it was sort of like a lecture from you know, Professor Ginrich, the history professor, uh, at, uh, at mock convention. Uh, not exactly the political speech that they, uh, uh, they expected, but I think he found himself surrounded by college students and he felt compelled to launch. He did give a good political speech, but he also launched a bit into Newt the Professor mode. Assuming that Newt knows something. <laughs> Assuming they were aware, which is not, not always the case. No, no, they, they, uh, they were. Uh, Bill Clinton came. Uh, Tell us about the... In 1988, Bill Clinton came, and uh, Bill Clinton is a famously social fellow. Uh, and uh, unlike Mario Cuomo, Bill Clinton stayed around uh, and spent time with the students. Uh, even went out to uh, a student favorite party haven out in the county, Zolman's Pavilion, and played the saxophone. Uh, Bill Clinton was quite an accomplished saxophonist, um, and the students were quite excited that he was willing to spend that much time with them, and, and he too gave a beautiful speech. Do any of these guys participate in the parade? The, the bigger speakers? I know Senator no. Warner, for instance, will. Well, Senator there. Warner has been there, yes. So yes. Tell me a little, because we've got some <clears> stuff of Senator Senator Warner is invaluable to the mock convention. He, he's invaluable to Washington and Lee University because he's so incredibly supportive. Um, he's supportive of mock convention. He's supportive of Washington term. He's supportive of Washington and Lee in every way possible. So his presence um, is important, partly because he reminds Washington and Lee students what Washington and Lee is all about and what it means to be a Washington and Lee student. He often talks when he, dis when he talks to the students, either in a large group, such as mock convention, or even in small groups, he talks about the honor system because he prides himself uh, on that. He also has been extraordinarily helpful in helping students with connections in the Senate, for example, uh, when he, he was a longtime senator, or in Washington in general. Um, senator Warner has lots of friends and lots of connections, and he's been enormously supportive. touched on, I don't know if we need to know more or not, on the tri-chairs, how are they, computer again, how are the, uh, how are the tri-chairs uh, selected? Is that important? <coughs> is that process important? Oh, that Absolutely it is. Okay. No, because this is, yeah. um, the mock convention is a continuing organization. It never goes out of business. It's like the U.S. Senate in that regard. Uh, the Old tri chairs choose the trustees who are young members of the mock convention organization who will still be here after the tri chairs have graduated. Those trustees have as their job to choose the new tri chairs. The tri chairs for the upcoming mock convention were chosen at the end of their freshman year. Now that's a difficult decision. How do you choose a freshman who you know will grow into that responsibility across four years? That is not an easy thing to do. Uh, and yet we've been very fortunate in that regard, largely because we have superb students at Washington and Lee, and they're very responsible and they're very uh, conscientious and hardworking. Uh, the tri-chairs then have the responsibility to build the executive committee of five and then the steering committee of 25 or 26. And this organization changes as the tri-chairs see fit every four years. Uh, and then they build the 50 state delegations. Uh, and that process takes years. It takes, it's a four-year cycle, and it repeats itself every single four years. And the mock convention itself, of course, is always in the presidential election year. And in recent years, it's been in January or February in order, again, to have a relevant prediction before the rest of the country knows who the nominee of the out party is going to be. So choosing the tri-chairs is critical. Um, part of the difficulty of running a startup business is sometimes you have to make difficult decisions. And sometimes as a 21-year-old tri-chair, you have to fire your best friend because your best friend is not doing a good job either as speaker chair or fundraising chair or media chair or what have you. And I've seen students agonize with the need to make that sort of decision. Uh, but the organization wasn't functioning properly, and so they had to downgrade the responsibility, oftentimes of one of their fraternity brothers or sorority sisters 
or even one of their best friends. Uh, that's part of the you know, hard lessons learned sometimes that the students go through, but they're very, they've been very successful at doing this. They've been willing to step up to the plate when necessary. Do they just raise their hand and say, I'm interested in being a tri-chair? How many people raise their hand and say that? Because they're not all political majors. No, that's right. <clears throat> Engineering no, that's right. Um, and one of the one of the uh, most successful uh, tri chairs was a pre med major. Um, so no, it isn't all politics majors. It's in fact, mock convention involves every major. Every again, it involves ninety five percent of the student body uh, over time. So uh, we draw on all majors for this. Um, but it is people who are intensely interested in politics, um, especially for the research operation. Um, you better be a political junkie if you're going to spend three to four years tracking uh, election results and you know the likely nominees uh, of uh, the out party. Um, but some people get involved in mock convention because they want to do things like uh, uh, public relations, or they want to do they want to be a journalist, um, or they're interested in making connections with alumni, so they get involved in fundraising, for example. Um, and so it isn't just uh, politics majors or political junkies who get involved. We oftentimes have students who are political junkies who are history majors or even English majors or journalism majors. Uh, so it takes all sorts. Um, uh, do you want me to talk more about building the organization? Um, I, but I, yes, but I am also curious, would be, if there are all these different types, it sounds like there needs to be a mock con 101 class to help these kids do it. But they are all over the place. I mean, it is somebody dealing with a million dollars worth of finance. Right. And, uh, you know, that's the, that's the C school. Right. Uh, you've got the journalism kids, obviously the political stuff. Right. So uh, how, how do they, is there any one thing you teach to these kids, the tri chairs in particular, since it flows down? My role, advocate? my role as advisor is largely passive. Uh, the students teach each other. Uh, there is a manual. It's now about three inches thick, that is passed down from generation to generation. Although each mock convention needs to reinvent the wheel, if you will, reinvent mock convention, reinvent the organization, but they can learn a lot from previous. Uh, mock convention tri-chairs, executive committee members, steering committee members, etc. Uh, for example, uh, the finance chair or treasurer as the position used to be called. Uh, the treasurer's report from previous mock conventions uh, provides very useful insight as to how to go about setting up this small startup company and how to go about keeping the books. Uh, Elizabeth Oliver, who's an accounting professor, uh, has been very helpful to the mock convention students, uh, literally in teaching them about accounting so they know how to balance the books of a, what becomes a half million to a million dollar uh, organization. So it's pretty important to choose certain people in certain disciplines, accounting for example for that, or journalism for the media chair, um, because students uh, bring certain skills, accounting skills, uh, to the job, or political research. Now the political research, um, I am really not an expert in um, uh, electoral politics. But we have lots of friends who are, including alumni. I mentioned before, Larry Sabato uh, is not an alum, but he's a professor who is probably the single most important uh, election expert in the state of Virginia. And Professor Sabato has been very helpful to the students. But for example, one year, Lance Terrence, a longtime Republican pollster who is an alum, came to campus and taught a course on political prognosticating. And Lance Terrence had a long, a successful career uh, as a pollster uh, and as a political consultant. And so he taught a class that consisted mostly of the steering committee of mock convention. And he taught them how to go about doing the research. But to be honest, they learn not so much from the professors as they do from one another. Uh, the old tri-chairs, the old organization, uh, they often come back and they help the students. They're there for advice, even if it's remotely, electronically, telephone or internet or email or what have you, um, they give advice on how to go ahead and you know, do the new, uh, uh, new, the new job. The previous political chair will explain, well, this is how we did the research operation. But of course, things will change, especially in the IT, with the IT revolution. Um, 
you know, various aspects, Twitter or Pinterest or, e or Facebook, other ways the process will change. You know, the Obama, administer or the Obama campaign revolutionized campaigning, making use of uh, the new uh, electronic resources um, and social media. Uh, mock convention had to roll with the times and learn how to do that. Or, for example, uh, the last two cycles, um, uh, mock convention has made greater use of a web presence. So, so the students had to learn about web design. Um, they learned that in part on their own, but they went out and found people who could help them with that uh, process uh, as well. We tap into enormous pools of expertise in all sorts of areas, but especially the political research. Uh, again, professors, pundits, pollsters, politicians in all 50 states, uh, but even some of the um, better known prognosticators um, in the country. For example, Rhodes Cook um, in Washington, D.C., who uh, is a well-known, used to be with Congressional Court, a well-known uh, election watcher, or Charlie Cook, who's also uh, well-known, no relation between Rhodes and Charlie, though they're friends. Um, Charlie Cook has been down and has helped the students as well in this process. Um, uh, we've had all sorts of individuals who we've had in to you know, help the students put together their research operation. Very interesting. Can you summarize again what um, the current technology is and then jump to 2016 and prognosticate? What, what technology you probably be, you're probably better at that. That's yeah. interesting. Um, um, yeah, yeah, that's... Well, for instance, yeah. last time, you know, Twitter lit up everything. Right. And, and it did start under Obama. Right. Uh, with, with, with all the social media and stuff like that. Right. Is there anything that you see on the horizon that's going to uh, make a difference? Or are all these other things just going to keep staying important? No, that's a good question. Uh, I think uh, this is this is an excellent way. This is an excellent way in which mock convention uh, is molded to the reality of American politics. American politics has been revolutionized by the IT revolution, the electronic information revolution. Um, yesterday's technology, Facebook, for example, may not be the technology of 2016. Facebook already appears to be fading. At least my 15-year-old daughter seems to be suggesting that it's on the fade. Uh, so by 2016, there may be some some new you know new kid on the block electronically. And of course, we need those going while you're talking about it because yeah, it is what is important. So what is to... this? Some advertisement came up there. Well, there's your Washington Post if you want that. Want that. So, um, so, so go back to 2016. Maybe the last problem was Facebook. I may be wrong about that. Who knows? Um, <laughs> I hope you're right about it. In 2016, mm -hmm. um, the students, uh, in order to make successful use of social media, will need to stay on the cutting edge of social media in the way in which the Obama campaign, for example, did in 2008 and then in 2012. Uh, this, of course, is what real presidential campaigns need to do, and for that matter, what the media, uh, the American media needs to do in order to stay on top of um, elections. And the two political parties need to do it as well. Well, the mock convention students need to. So, for example, you know, they increasingly used email, and then they increasingly started using the web for research purposes, et cetera, and for their own presence with their web design, web page and the design of that, for example. Um, but then they got into the new social media like Facebook or Pinterest or um, Twitter, and they made use of all these things. I would say by 2016, there'll be some new uh, electronic uh, resource that the students will need now uh, to um, be on top of. But however, uh, college students typically are the first to know about the, you know, the, ne the best, ne next best thing in electronic uh, resources. So typically there is somebody you know, in the student body who knows a lot about, uh, about this. Um, Washington Lee built its own first web page using a student. That's fun. And so for WNL in general, the mock how do you think the mock convention is, is viewed by WNL by Washington Hall? 
integral part of the student's uh, thing, or is it just a flash in the pan for a week? No, mock conviction. Well, actually, let me step back. So this is the administration. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to talk about the administration. <laughs> Yeah. It may not make it, but, but, yeah. but, it's, but, it, but it would be some interesting insight as to how the university feels about a mock convention. The university has been very, very excuse me. The university has been very supportive of mock convention um, all along. Uh, one of the reasons for that is the alumni are endlessly supportive of mock convention. You meet any Washington Lee alum, and they will remember their mock convention, and. I've told my students, my mock convention students, if you ask them for anything, they will give it to you because they remember their own mock convention, whether it's a connection, uh, whether it's fundraising, uh, whether it's uh, an invitation to come down and speak. The alumni are endlessly supportive. And any university lives in part on its alumni. And the alumni at Washington Lee are intensely loyal. Um, our university president, Ken Ruscio, is of course himself an alum, and the university president always speaks at mock convention, uh, and Ken did a funny thing at the last mock convention. Every mock convention student thinks their convention was the best ever, and so Ken in his speech rolled out this praise about the best convention ever, and then he said, and of course, I'm talking about the 1976 convention, which was my convention. And he let down all the students in the room because they thought he was praising uh, them. But every alum thinks their convention was the best. Ken is very loyal. President Ruscio is very, very, uh, very supportive of mock convention, uh, as all alumni are. Wonderful answer, and I, and I, and I actually have all. You should get that clip. I mean, it was yeah. hilarious. Yeah. It was because I knew it was yeah. coming. I'm sitting there watching. These students are all falling for this hook, hook, line, and sinker, yeah. and he, he yeah. just. <laughs> yeah. Um, gosh, I think we've talked about practically everything. Um, is there any other stuff we want to talk about? I'm on the list there. Um, we've used up a lot of your time before. It was really good stuff. No, I think that's, uh, um, um, I'll make one last point if I may. <clears throat> um, mock convention, like other organizations at Washington Lee, and that would include fraternities, sororities, sports teams, uh, the hundred plus student organizations we have, uh, are ways in which students uh, learn student self-government, again, something we pride ourselves on. But they're also community building organizations. Uh, the mock convention team, under the pressure of four years, uh, uh, with the intense desire to get the prediction right, uh, they become fast friends. Uh, it's a remarkable community building uh, organization at Washington Lee, and the students build friendships for life. Um, it's one of the reasons that Washington Lee alumni are so incredibly and intensely loyal and so willing to always open their checkbooks, open their hearts, uh, and help the students in every way they can. <laughs>